Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with a quick craft with me. This is a project that I'm working on for the Autumn Garden Journal. I'm just getting into the weeds here of getting some ephemera going so that I can begin to um, expand my plans for the journal. As a reminder, the Autumn Garden Journal is the grand prize in the 2000 subscriber giveaway. In case you have not been following, we did hit that benchmark a couple of weeks ago, going on three weeks, I think. And uh, so we it happened really fast, so I was not prepared for three prizes to give away. So there's a first, second, and third prize. The third prize is the mini Altoid journal that I created on camera. And the second prize is the Autumn Diary journal. It is a journal made out of Amazon packaging and Amazon bag <clears throat> and a beautiful kit from my white cat journal so that is the second prize that process that journal is complete and so in order to qualify for either of the remaining the remaining prizes the first and the second you would need to go back to the playlist for the autumn Gar the Autumn Garden Journal for the grand prize and the Autumn Diary Journal for the second prize. And you'll need to be a subscriber, like each of the videos, and leave a comment on each video in each of the playlists. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a random draw on the, the third prize uh, from my first announcement video for the 2000 subscriber giveaway. So that the third prize is just going to be a random draw. So no, um, no per particular expectations there other than um, you do need to be a subscriber. So um, yeah, so that's what we're, what we're going to do today. So today I'm going to make some vellum envelopes for the garden, the autumn garden journal. So off camera, I did go ahead and create some little clusters because I wanted to be able to decorate these beauties up. So I've got these that I made. Really, really fun. I love making clusters. So I did want to have a vellum base um, just because I thought it was something different than what I normally do. <clears throat> I love how they ink up on the edges. So that's really why I love working with it. But they're, they vary in size. But I wanted to have a little bit of decoration prepared for our envelopes. So what I've got here is my envelope scoreboard. Um, you don't need a scoreboard to do envelopes. I'm just doing it because it's easy and I have it. So you can totally do it without out. I've got these uh, border, well, these kind of punches, not punches, die cuts. Oh, I'm all stuck. <laughs> I'm all stuck. I've got these um, dies. They're a border die. So we're going to be using these to make the flaps on the envelope, similar to what I did in the um, sweet envelope um, video I did recently. Um, I just cut those myself. These This time I'm going to use the dies. So we've got that. I do need to, I forgot to grab my die cut machine, but I will do that in a moment. <clears throat> it's not at my desk. So these were just some, just me playing around. So this is the scallop punch, one of them. So um, I just took a piece of, of one of the images, the digitals from the kit, from a kit and I print it on it. If you want to see how I print on vellum, I will link that video in the description box and over on my blog and you can see how um, how I do that. Now, that being said, every printer is different, so my instructions are, and my demonstration are based on my printer. Um, I don't have any problem with ink running. I have an inkjet printer. I absolutely love printing on vellum. I do vellum pages in my journals all the time. So that's just one sample, and this is another sample where I took one of the digitals from Ruby and Pearl, and I just, um, I did just did a rough tear on this one just to kind of play around with that. So those are just some prototypes. And then I did also um, make some blank envelopes just to again playing around with my envelope punch board and such so I've got three different sizes here and I believe this one is the um, when you the this the end product that I wanted was a four by six envelope so I had to cut my paper to eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter and score it at three and three eighths this one was a six and a half by six and a half inch piece of vellum and it, the um, 
the dimensions on this are three and a half by four with a three and one eighth inch score line on the punch board. And then this one is the five and three quarter by five and three quarter with an end result of three by three and a half and a two and five eighths inch score line. So I will talk with you more about that. I actually had to watch a video when I first got my envelope punch board because it was overwhelming to me. So I have already cut a couple of these to do on camera today. So let me get, it's been a few days since I did this, so let me just measure to make sure that I've got everything going on and I'm straight. So yeah, eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I had this stuff prepared and then I got sick again and so I am still under the weather but feeling better. So, and then this one is eight and a quarter. We may play around depending on time and see if we can create, um, and cut another one smaller. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that. I also printed, I purchased these from Caroline's Musings and they are just autumn quotes and I thought they would be fun to put on as decor here. So I've just got a bunch of things here that I just went to town printing on vellum because it uh, takes a longer because I have to feed one page in at a time. So this is uh, from a kit um, this is from another one. This is from a different kit, I believe. And then this is wallpaper that I ordered. I believe this is from TaylorMade Journals. I'm not 100% sure, but I will, I will look into that. And then we've got this one as well. And then a couple other pages here that would be fun. This is just a coffee dyed uh, digital. And then a couple more from some of those kits. So I just kind of went a little crazy getting that stuff cut out and I've got a bunch of stuff here that I don't need on my desk <laughs> I just grabbed so I'm gonna set those aside and we're gonna go ahead and start with the two um, eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter that are gonna give us a four by six envelope so I'm gonna get my my punch board over here and I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned because when you're working with vellum sorry about the the focus it doesn't like the white of my desk so with the envelope scoreboard and working with vellum, you can't really see the score line very well. So when you get to the point where you have to turn this and line it up with this score line, this point, it's very hard to see. So I just use my pencil and I make a mark and then I can erase it when I am done. So let's go ahead and start with this one. This is just a, um, I believe this is uh, from one of the kits. I'm not sure. I don't think it's mine, um, but I will, again, um, all the kits that I'm using in the Autumn Garden Journal will be linked so in each video. So when you're working with this, um, you're basically looking at this, this diagram here and you're deciding what is the card size or in this case envelope size that I want my envelope to be and then you look to see what your paper size needs to be and then what your score score line needs to be. So um, because I was working with digitals, I knew that I was, I had an eight by 11 and a half inch is a typical, um, typical size of the paper that I'm printing on. And so I had to make sure that my dimensions were um, small enough to fit on that. So that's why I chose the six and a half by six and a half. No, the eight and a quarter, excuse me, eight and, oh, wait a minute. Um, hold on. Where's eight and a quarter? <laughs> there it is, eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter for a four by six envelope, scoring at three and three eighths. So what you're gonna do is put this in the envelope punch board, and I'm going to line it up here to the three and three eighths score line right here. I'm gonna move that my camera in a little bit more here and see if I can make this a little bit clearer. So, um, I, cause I don't know how hard it is to see. So this is the three and three eighths inch score line. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch first, which just pressing down. And then I'm going to get my, um, my thing. <laughs> I should have got that out first. Um, the beautiful thing is that the vellum is easy to score because it's so thin. So I'm just gonna run this. Um, I am holding it pretty diligently because it does want to move because of the kind of paper that I'm working with. So then before I move that, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pencil mark just about halfway here, just so that I, when I line it up and I turn it, I'm gonna be able to see that line. So I'm turning 
and obviously I can see this line pretty well and that um, is I don't know if you guys can see that you can see that score line all across here but the other papers that I was working with I could not see it so it probably depends on what you're printing on so I'm lining that up so that this point is along that score line that I just made and I'm going to punch again I'm going to do the same I'm going to go ahead and do my score line and I'm going to mark it with my pencil and I can erase this very easily so it's a nice little hack what's going on here there we go <laughs> thought we were clogged up there and then we've got another punch here so I'm going to punch and score like so and make our pencil mark and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do my last scoring line punch and score so I think that's good right there punch and score and mark okay and before I fold that I'm going to go ahead and do the other one just for the sake of ease now I realize that these uh, flowers are going to get weird because they're not going to stay upright in terms of directionally but that's okay so same dimensions we're going to go three and three eighths with our first uh, score line and punch and then i'm going to go ahead and just uh, speed through this And one last score line. I don't really need to make a pencil mark there, but I'm going to just for my, for my folding. So there we go. <clears throat> we will be doing a little bit of trimming here too because it makes a really, uh, if you can see on my prototype, well, I already cut it off, but um, on one of the flaps, the flaps are exactly the same, so they're really long and pointed, so I cut the bottom one off a little bit but I'll show you that here in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold. I'm trying to keep it lined up. Uh, oh, I need to erase these marks first, hold on. I guess we don't really need them anymore. I don't, the score line is pretty clear. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm gonna show you here in a second. So you can see those really well. And we will be inking. Uh, we will be inking all this up too, which is going to make them even stand out more. But just getting those erased, I don't want those lines to show. There we go. And so you can see, I printed on these a couple of days ago, but I'm able to erase, and I'm not. I'm not having any effect on that ink at all. So <clears throat> again, that's my printer. I don't know if that's the same for all. So I'm just folding our flaps in and then we'll decide which one we're going to cut down and which one we want to be the uh, which flap. So I'm just being very gentle because it would be easy to crease that where it's not supposed to be creased because the vellum is so flexible. So there we go. Got a little bit of curling there probably just from where it was being stashed on my on my desk while I was waiting to be able to film again. So there we go. So let's take a look at this. Oh, I love that because we're seeing both flowers a little bit. So which one flap do we want to be? That means we're going to cut this flap off. So I'm just going to um, try to line this up. Actually, I'm going to grab my mat just so I can um, at least measure a straight line here. Hold on. Uh, there we go just have this hanging I don't use it very often so I just have it hanging on the end of my uh, end of my desk so there we go so I'm just going to line that up so I can get a good even cut or even line here so I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know what I'm gonna be brave and try my try my cutter so I've got my little knife should be pretty simple sweet oops trim that up a little bit and grab my scissors hoping that was straight doesn't look straight by my eye but 
straight by the mat, I thought. I thought it was straight. <laughs> it's not straight. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna be okay with that because it is on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for a moment and do the folding on this one. So again, I'm just folding. Uh, so our score line is on this side. I'm gonna flip it over and score it in, or fold it in. Like so. I love this coffee dyed paper on this though. I think it's really beautiful. Really beautiful. Oops, got a little bit off on that one. Let me try that again. I was a little bit eager. And again, because this uh, vellum is very uh, soft, it's going to do whatever you want it to do in terms of folds. So I would be a little bit more careful than I was here. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this flap off because it's the planer one. So I'm gonna, again, try to line that up, see if I can do a better job with the cut here. <clears throat> I don't generally like to use my craft knife this way, but I'm gonna try to be different. Oh, that worked out beautifully. I don't really like craft knives, they kind of scare me. So there we go. So let's go ahead and go back to this one. I'm gonna move my mat. We don't need that in the video here. And I'm going to go ahead and get my white glue, and that's what we're going to use to, um, to glue this shut. But I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges, so I will again speed through that for you. Okay, just about done. I am going to show you where, because the I'm inking, um, it's going to kind of pronounce some of those folds that I corrected. So I'm going to just show you that here in a second, just setting my ink aside. So here um, I was off on my fold, so I've got a couple of double lines. I don't know if you guys can tell that on camera, but it is okay. So again, we had already decided that we're going to have this be the bottom flap because it is planar. So I'm going to go ahead and fold that down. I'm going to get that out of the way. And I'm going to use my white glue to glue this shut. So I am just going to crease that again. And it's, uh, I maybe should have not um, cut it quite so far down. I should have probably only cut it to that point. So I will make a note of that in the future. So I can see that I've got about, what's the distance there? Um, let's see, about five eighths of an inch uh, of room to go ahead and glue. But I'm just going to kind of estimate here. And I'm using the white glue because it works better on vellum, in my opinion. but we might pull one of those samples out and see if we get a different result by using Fabri-Tac. So let me get my Fabri-Tac out and ready just in case. I wanna do that, I'm not sure. I also know that Barely Arts is the one that usually, um, so this is a not Barely Arts, it's like Barely Arts in terms of its a lot of its properties. It dries slower, you have a little bit more movability. <coughs> Excuse me but um, I wonder if the Barely Arts is, is different in that regard. So we might use that too. So we have got that one ready. So we're gonna move on and glue this one together. And even though, let me just grab one of these small ones and just glue it and see if we get a different, a different result with the Barely Arts. Hopefully it's not going to give me a headache here. I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper towel get it out of here oh there we go she's not plugged up so that's good barely arts is so expensive so I have gone to this other white glue that I get for a lot cheaper on Amazon so let's just see though maybe maybe there's something in the barely arts that look at that look at that that definitely is a lot more invisible oh, perhaps I don't know I don't know. It's probably showing a lot because we've got um, this really this clear vellum, no print on it. 
but I don't mind it. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. And um, yeah, and I love the vellum, so I'm willing to kind of pay that price. So that experiment was, uh, didn't produce different results. So I'm gonna get one more of these, and this time I'm going to use the, um, the Fabri-Tac and see what happens with Fabri-Tac. These were just samples anyway, so not a big deal. So I'm going to go in here, same thing, I've got that about a five, of, five eighths of an inch um, area there that I, I can glue in, so I'm just going to do that and see what happens. Oh, the Fabri-Tac, I almost feel like that's better. Hmm, I think it's a toss up, we've got some Fabri-Tac in the inside there though. So I'm not sure. I think we'll probably try Fabri-Tac on, um, on our, our last one. So that's kind of what that looks like. And then where did our other one go? And then this is what the Barely Arts did. And it may be because we are getting a lot more uh, glue on there to make that work. So I'm not super thrilled about that, but you could always put something on the back of it to you know, just take away from that. I'm not too concerned about it, honestly. So oh, I didn't even look to see which was the which was the paler side, because um, that could have been, I can tell by looking at it that this is the dark, so that's what the darker than this. So we want that on the outside for sure, for sure. So <coughs> let's go ahead and get, yeah, I definitely shouldn't have cut that so short. My bad. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this. So then, I think what we'll do here for cl for a closure is go ahead and put some um, dots here, vellum dots, if I can locate them. Um, I haven't used them in a while, so give me just a quick second, guys. There they are. Easy peasy. In a nice, logical spot. So I think the, the dots are going to be the best bet for um, holding this closed. So I'm going to put one, um, I'm going to put the uh, hard one up here on the, I'm going to go as close to the tip as possible because it's going to be weak because it's vellum. So, and then I'm going to put this one upside down with sticky side up and place it right there and then close my envelope and she'll be in place. Perfect. Alrighty. So let's do the same with this one. And um, I'm gonna, we're gonna decorate them, and then we'll be, we will be done. Short and sweet video today. Um, I pro I'll probably do a little bit more offline. I'm not sure what what I what I'm planning on doing. I'm I'm again in the beginning stages of dreaming about what I want to do with this journal and what kinds of things I can add that are a little bit different than what I'd normally do. So I love that, love it. Okay, so. I'm gonna grab my basket of stuff that I've chosen for the kit. I'm gonna show you, just give you a preview of some of the textile stuff I'll be using. So this is all of my embellishments that I have cut from the kit. Oh boy, that camera is really close. <laughs> um, these are all the kit uh, ephemera. And these are some scrap, scrap um, we'll probably pull those textiles out. We might use those here. Um, they're the leftovers of what I used for the cluster. So we've got a, ver a variety of laces that I want to use. So I just have them in my little basket here. This is just ribbon that's the perfect color. And then I've got this trim which I absolutely love. Love, love. That might be a good one for this. And then um, this is one of my favorite favorite laces as well. We've got some other ribbon. I just got this at Hobby Lobby and I'm really loving the pattern. I feel like it goes well with this kit. Um, so we're gonna be introducing that as well. Not on this though. And then I've also got this rose trim that 
I discovered in my drawer, which I think will be really pretty. So I'm going to set in some pink, and then this is kind of a blush color of those, um, <coughs> excuse me, those uh, leaves. So, but I'm going to set that aside. You guys don't need to necessarily see that. So I want to know, I want to think about how I want to decorate these. I do know that I want some kind of a piece of lace on it. Um, because I really like that look, um, generally speaking. So I've got this lace, which I think is just gorgeous. This one's a little bit folded and it curves a little bit, so it might need to be trained. I don't want to block out the flowers, though. That wouldn't be bad, though. Kind of separating out those two flowers. I think this might be a little bit wide, though. Let me try. And I think this is too stark. <coughs> Pardon my indecision. I hadn't really thought. And then I've got this brown, which is one of my favorite. I'm gonna use this brown. So this is just, uh, again, one of my favorite laces. It's the same as this, just in a different color. And I get it at Hobby Lobby and I love it. That is beautiful. So that means I want to use one of these clusters that has that lace as well. I think I used it in only one of them though. So this one, I love fall. What do you think? Oh, I love that. Yes, and that's all it's going to need. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on. And I'm just gonna, I like to kind of line up my lace, positioning it where I want it, so that I know what my glue line is going to be across the surface here. So I can kind of go like this and then get it going here all the way across. I love the crinkly sound of vellum is why I love to use it. So that's that. Let's go ahead and trim it off. I will make something for these to go inside of them off camera. Don't need to do that right now. Hope I didn't cut that open. That was kind of random. I don't think I did. Okay. That is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And then we've got I Love Fall, um, which I'm speaking truth into existence <laughs> or a desired truth. I really don't love fall, but um, I'm making a fall journal for my beautiful people out there. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to state that as fact. So I'm trying to decide if I want that to come down a little bit so that we can see that I th I'm leaning that way and just kind of centering it here. Uh, we can still see the flowers, which I think I like, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna put the Fabri-Tac on the back here. I'm not worried about using Fabri-Tac in this case because we're not gonna be able to see through it because it's on the bottom. And I'm lining this up and putting it up about there and then just kind of eye spying these scallops here so that it's kind of in the middle doesn't have to be perfect but there we go that is gorgeous if I do say so myself love it okay there we have it so let's go ahead and do the other one and then we will be done for the day so this one's going to be a little more challenging because we don't it's plain right it's plain Jane there's our little velcro I love those little velcro dots um and now that I've already covered this, I can't really disguise this. I don't think on this paper it's a big deal. It almost looks like it's part of the paper. Um, but I w you would want to think about that a little differently if you're printing on a really light colored uh, digital onto your vellum. It's going gonna, it's gonna to probably show like that, the glue. So let's see. What do we want to put on this one? This one would be a great one to use some of this I think so let me just um, peel some of this off and see if that feels like it would work feels very plain and it doesn't feel like it goes with that so but that doesn't mean it doesn't go Yeah, I'm not feeling that for some reason. And then this is really narrow. 
it's kind of almost um it feels like a it's very sheer like a chiffon this is really pretty isn't that pretty this would be gorgeous with something else underneath it not plain so then i've got this as another favorite lace that i think would be pretty on this envelope too you know what that's what i want i want that we might be able to come in with some of this as well no probably not uh, let's see what we've got for uh, clusters i think i want to kind of go big so that's leaving me kind of in a pickle because i like that i'm just going to cut this off so i can work with it here <clears throat> because i want to use this cluster if i use this uh, trim so let's see what it would look like to do that that would be pretty as well actually that would be really pretty let's see what it looks like coming down a little bit I'm just not feeling it I'm not feeling it at all hmm. let me just get more out of the drawer <laughs> when in doubt find more right it is okay oh we've got this as well this would be really pretty it's very sheer it's got these dots that might be really pretty as well but I'm not feeling that and all of my other clusters are small oh we could use this one with that other lace because it's the same lace which guys it doesn't have to be the same lace I'm just feeling very persnickety today so I've got more of this so I think I'm going to go ahead and just um, trim some of that off Oh, it's almost the perfect if I cut up the center of this this last one here. Hopefully moderately straight. I'm feeling like this is better, a better choice. Like that. And, and then we could put our cluster just like right there. And we could actually add some of that ribbon. This ribbon might be a pretty accent. It is not even opened. I get most of my ribbon at Hobby Lobby when it's 50% off, although their last sale was only 40% off, which I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if they're changing things on us. It's still a good deal. And then I also get some of mine at, um, I mentioned, a an antique slash uh, sewing store slash art supply store in my little town so I think this is what I want to do do we want to go up though have it be at the top I just love that oh I love that and that matches that so yeah that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna go all the way to the top and again I'm gonna place this kind of to the side so I can get my various glue lines because I usually make use this mark as my bottom line for lining this up and then I come back and put little dabs of glue where those other bits come down further so there we go doesn't take a lot of glue so there we go and again I'm gonna line this up to the top and I am again trying to center my scallops a little bit at the bottom uh, here and here so we're gonna have to do probably a little bit of trimming but that is okay it doesn't have to be perfect either I'm just gonna dab that I like using the paper towel because then I don't get my fingers quite as sticky as I would otherwise and uh, we're gonna glue that lace on and uh, this ribbon on and then we'll come back and tack those down a little bit so I'm just gonna run this bead of glue up along this edge like so I'm glad I found this I was actually uh, spooling some of my uh, I had ordered some seam binding and it was just all a mess in the drawer so I spooled that last night sitting in here uh, and uh, so I found this ribbon in my stash I'd forgotten about. I'm just going to trim that off and trim this off. And oh, we're going to have to trim more off. So I'm going to turn it over. 
and we're going to just trim this edge. Try not to cut the envelope open. I think I'm safe. Not much to trim off on this side. There we go. Oh, I love this. It looks so kind of vintagey, doesn't it? I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. Just a dot. And here. Just because I don't want it to get stuck on anything. Here and here. I'm going to go ahead and pat that down too. I've got strings of glue going everywhere. It's all right. It is okay. I love that. That ring, that uh, the ribbon is ripply a little bit because it's going over. It's being glued on something that's pretty, um, you know, pretty thick there. So I love this. Always believe. I'm going to center that right there. Actually, maybe bring it down a little bit right there. So it's kind of a little bit lower than everything else. So we're going to glue that on and then we'll, we, we will be done. So again, um, I will get uh, all the uh, qualifications for the drawing. I will also put in words at the in the description box in case um, I didn't make a lot of sense uh, in my um, detailing that here on the camera. So there we go. I love it. So these are our two beautiful so I'm gonna call it a call it a day I probably will do a couple small ones so that I can use some of these smaller um, well this is a large one this will probably just go in the journal somewhere on a page I need to secure that edge though that's not gonna be good um, but I will see you guys next time in another video take care bye bye